thought the person did a fantastic job, rather than use the application again, I'll just contact them directly. So how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. Customers just deal directly with the task of rather than using your application again. Yeah, so it's a great question. And in any marketplace business, you know, one of the key things that you have to think about is the disintermediation or, or gray market, some people call it. eBay has dealt with this. Um, many other marketplaces have as well. So it happens. You can't be so naive to think that it's never going to happen. But what you have to do is you have to create enough value on the platform for people to want to be there. So on the client side, some things that we do are we handle all payments, including any uh, reimbursement expenses. So if you send a tasker to Whole Foods to pick up $50 worth of groceries, you don't have to have a cash or check on hand. You can just pay, pay them right through the platform, which is just really convenient. We hear from our clients. We also have a million dollar insurance guarantee for every single task that goes through the site. So it's a nice sort of trust and safety measure as well. On the tasker side, every time they complete a job, they get a rating and a review. And so they're building up their reputation for every single job that they complete. And what they've learned is that as they build up their reputation, they're actually able to command more money. We see taskers come onto the platform at an hourly rate, let's just say $25 an hour. And four months in, they're at $50 an hour. And it's because they've been able to build up that reputation over time. We actually incent our taskers to get rehired for the same job from the same client again and again. We make it really, really easy on the platform for that to happen. And we actually take down our service fee every time it does. Um, because we know that that relationship and that trust that they've built is really important to the client and to the tasker. But we also know if the client stays on the platform with that tasker, we can cross sell them into other categories, into other areas of work as well. So we actually encourage it we think it's a good thing we try to make it as easy as possible for them to have those relationships and then just you know add as much value as possible on the platform for both sides yeah so um, you know I, I see task rapid being awesome because it's kind of like the, the first like pioneer in on-demand services but I think in the past few years there's been a little bit of expansion where there's um, focus on specific verticals, right? Mm -hmm. I think there are companies that do um, food deliveries, um, nannies, and demand, and so on. So, what do you see the future of on demand services mm -hmm. be like? And if there are any areas that are still uh, ripe for disruption currently? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, there's so much happening in the space right now, and so much has happened over the last two years. I mean, when I started TaskRabbit in 2008, the word the sharing economy didn't exist yet. And now it's become this major trend. And so I think there are some verticals and some categories where it makes sense to focus on a single vertical. Areas like transportation, um, food. I think that there are, there are certain categories like that that have their own user experience that really has to be built in properly to the model. What we hear from our clients on TaskRabbit is, for help around the home, which is our area of focus, people don't want to have 20 different apps on their phone to manage. And because the trust barrier is so high when you're inviting someone into your house, if you can build that trust between a single brand and that consumer, then you've won. And so our model is help around the home, a handful of categories that we focus on um, and that we do really well, and then we really focus on the quality and reliability and the trustworthiness of our tasker community. And that's a really big, important piece of the model to us. Um, and so that's just kind of our philosophy on a single vertical versus many. I think going too broad and doing too many is also um, a problem. It's just dangerous. People don't really know what you do when you try to do everything. So I think a more narrowed focus around a theme has been really good for us, but I also think there's certain categories, again, like transportation, that can be verticalized and are big enough work markets that will work really well. What are these verticals that no big players have gone into yet? Um, wow. Hmm. You want your next startup idea, don't you? <laughs> yeah. OK, well, I see some early things emerging in payments, um, some early um, 
marketplace is emerging around food, not necessarily like Grubhub, like food delivery, but more around like chefs and preparation of food. I think those are still very early, but very interesting. Um, those are probably the two areas right now that I see kind of as nascent, but have potential.